In the last video, we had a halfway working calculator, and I challenged you to implement the decimal point button. So you can see we can enter numbers, but right now our decimal point doesn't work, and we want to implement that. So hopefully you came up with your own way. There's more than one way to do most everything, and I'm going to show you uh, one way that I think that we could solve this problem. So let's go into the event structure and find the event for the decimal point. And we only want to insert a decimal one time into a number. We don't want to have multiple decimal points in a number. So that's something we're going to have to check for and we'll have to ignore any subsequent uh, uh, clicks to the decimal point button. We can accomplish this with the search and replace string vi. We'll use this vi to search the user input string to see if it has a decimal. Then probably use a select vi to determine which output to pass on. So we want to give it the search string, that's the user input string, and we want to search for a decimal point. We will know if one's found because we will check the number of replacements. That's the number of times the decimal point is found. And we want that to be equal to zero. If there's none found, that means that we can insert a decimal point. Otherwise, ignore that request to insert a decimal point. Let's use the select VI from the comparison palette. So we're going to test to see if it's equal to zero, pass that test into the select VI, and if it's false, we want to keep the existing user input string. So we're going to wire that false node to the user input string as it is. If it's true and there's no decimal point already, we will concatenate a decimal point to the user input. So go into the string palette, find the concatenate strings vi, and we want to pass its output to the select vi, and into it take the existing user input and append the decimal point character. Alright, let's test it out. So let's clear, goes back to zero, enter 3.12 or 3 and 12 hundredths, let's clear it. And you'll see that we have a problem. If the whole number is zero and we append a decimal point, we're running into a problem. This takes us back to our numeric input where we test to see if it's equal to zero. Now instead of testing to see if it's equal to zero, that won't work because a zero point nothing is still zero and we don't want to lose that decimal point. So we want to see if the string is equal and not really just equal in a numeric sense, but completely equal. We want to know if that user input is exactly the same as the initial string. Because if it is, then we know we want to replace it. If it's not, then we know that it might be zero point something and we want to continue appending onto that. You can see that testing it out now, I am getting the desired behavior.